Today we're reviewing Cadmium Yellow Hue by Windsor Newton Cotman. What's up, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of The Pain Show. And today we're looking at Cadmium Yellow Hue by Windsor Newton Cutman. This is a very interesting paint. And the reason why is it's one of the very first paints I got in a tube like ever. Um, I started working in pens, uh, in Van Gogh pens, when I just got started in watercolor a little over three years ago now, I think. Um, and then I decided to make a switch to tubes and I knew nothing. So um, what I wanted was to switch to a professional uh, artist uh, grade paint, but I didn't know any better. And so I went out and bought the Cutmans, uh, about five of them, I believe, uh, which actually ended up being a good uh, decision because these are of very decent quality, I would say. It's not artist grade, really, it's student grade, but they're still pretty good if you know how to choose your paints wisely. So I've got uh, the cadmium yellow hue, I got also a laser and crimson hue, um, I got uh, 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 back in the day lamp black which I pl I'm planning on reviewing as well in the paint show uh, and the titanium white or Chinese, Chinese white which I had nothing to do with and barely used up until uh, today um, and also French ultramarine of course it was one of the first blues I, uh, I got so if you're getting the right paints you can uh, get the cheaper ones and they'll, they'll actually be pretty good uh, Patrick Lee Greaves on his channel Pure Watercolor has um, uh, several reviews of the, or, or I think the few recent videos feature these, the Cotmans, and the results are really, really good. Uh, I know some professional artists here uh, in Israel use these and the results are stunning, so it's like nothing, there's no reason not to. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do now is give you first a better view of the two because we didn't get to see many of these, then we're going to go over some of the paint info and finally the demo. So let's get started. So here's a closer look at this tube and I really squeezed it out so uh, it has this uh, weird shape uh, but in any case cadmium yellow hue, uh, Windsor Newton Cotman, these are again the student grade, uh, still very good um, compared to the to the uh, artist grade or, uh, of lesser quality but still really really good for, for sketches and even for final work as long as you get the right ones and they're light fast and I'm gonna go over some of these uh, this paints stats uh, for you in just a moment but I just wanted you to sh see uh, the, the tube itself. Here's the, the cap is uh, relatively easy to, to unscrew, okay? So you can see here I was uh, able to very easily unscrew it. It has a good grip, uh, unlike some other brands that are a little hard, but I want to keep it closed just for now. In a moment I'll open it up. So in any case, let's go over some of this paint's information. So here we go, very simple, cadmium yellow hue, Cotman pigments, uh, PY97 and PY65, these are both aerolite yellows. Um, from what I know, these are good ones, um, they're relatively light fast and as they say the permanence is A, meaning it is the, as light fast as it gets, at least <laughs> as this brand gets. Um, so these two I know are recommended to use, there are many yellows that are a little more fugitive and uh, less recommended. Let me know in the comment below uh, what these are. I'm less familiar with them, but I do know that 97 and 65 are, are very popular. Uh, my Daniel Smiths are also based on these pigments and some other paints uh, that I have. Uh, so in any case, Permanence A, Series 1, this is a relatively cheap one, as I mentioned. Uh, it is transparent, which is good, it's really important. I have so many opaque yellows that I got by accident, and they're not just, they don't suit my needs as much as others, um, which is why I really recommend uh, you play around with it, and if you see that you like transparency, go for that. And it's watercolor, you know. It's it's one of the the the, the you know main <laughs> marks of watercolor painting is the transparency. Uh, and this one is staining, according to what I saw online. Uh, we're gonna uh, test some of these things out in just a moment here. Okay, I'm gonna set things up and we'll get started. So I'm gonna start out just by doing a very simple swatch. So I'm going to start out just by doing a very uh, regular kind of swatch thing and I'm going to grab some of that paint here and you can see it's a very nice, um, a bit orangey yellow I suppose. Uh, so let's see what that looks like on paper. Uh, I do see that the, the light uh, in the recording is a bit off so I'll try and fix it 
uh, in post, <laughs> just try to edit it uh, and see what it's going to be like. Uh, but in any case, you see it's um, it's a very beautiful yellow. I like that. I think it's uh, it's pretty neutral. Let's say sufficiently neutral. It's not too warm, uh, not too cool, uh, and I think it works really well. So I'm just trying to uh, grab more of the actual yellow here and to show you uh, what it looks like in its full strength. It's not that strong a, a color, you know, yellows, uh, generally speaking, are pretty weak. Uh, I will try and add a bit more to that and see if we can push it a little darker, but I think this is really uh, as dark as it gets, okay? So next up, we're gonna try and do some wet in wet here. And I'm gonna start off just by pre-wetting the area, not too much, just a little. This is a very gentle paint, it's not, uh, it's not going to be very dominant and that's fine the yellows uh, usually I at least in the way in my approach I don't need them to be too strong as long as I can mix uh, a dark enough of an orange I'm good uh, I'm good to go uh, because I do like sometimes to have uh, darker oranges so uh, in any case pre-wetting it and let's start just dabbing in a bit of yellows in there and seeing the reaction uh, so you can see here and again, it's not going to get as strong uh, necessarily as, as most of the paints we've seen in this show. Uh, but I do think the result is uh, is very good. And this is as really as dark as yellow should get uh, for, for what I want, for my needs. Now, I know some people do need stronger yellows. Uh, I'm not really sure if you do florals, if you need that dark yellow. Uh, or not, I suppose it could be helpful, uh, but in any case, yeah. There are many oranges that, that are very dark and can do the job uh, same way, so uh, maybe some go with oranges in that case. Uh, but in any case, I'm just dabbing in, and you can see here, just this is probably as dark as it's gonna get, and it will dry uh, out a lot lighter, so uh, this may require even glazing. Uh, it could be interesting to try and glaze a few layers. Uh, what I think I'll do is I'm gonna try and lift some of that uh, very first swatch that I placed, uh, and then I will also try and um, glaze over it and see if we can get it to be a little darker. I'm not sure about that, we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, but before that, I do want to try out some mixes. So let's try and mix this uh, with a, I guess, cool green, something like a phthalo, uh, phthalo blue, sorry, a cool blue. Um, and let's see, maybe it's a bit contaminated. There we go. So we've got a bit of a pure blue here going. And I'm going to try and grab some more of the yellow let it mix a bit on paper. It's not that of a vibrant result really because um, when when I find at least when I mix the more cadmium yellows even if it's with cool blues it's not always a very vibrant result. Uh, I want to try and get some more of the yellow here and get a darker mix. So you see this is kind of the green you would get from uh, mixing these two. It's actually a nice one. It's, um, it's not too bright and it does have a natural flair to it. Uh, it's so funny because the reason why I initially didn't like the phthalo greens, phthalo blues and greens were, were that they are unnatural, but uh, mixed with other paints, they do produce some beautiful results. Uh, so this is it, I guess, for uh, th this kind of blue. Uh, let's try out, I do believe, uh, <laughs> this is actually French ultramarine, believe it or not. It's just covered by some uh, Venetian. Uh, English Nation Red, I believe. So I'm gonna pick up some of the pure paint here uh, and we're gonna try this out. And it should be a bit of a similar uh, result, I guess. Not that different. I'm gonna get some of that yellow. And you see, this will probably be a, a little more muted, a little more olivey uh, from my experience. So there is a bit of a difference here. Uh, the French Ultramarine really tends to neutralize uh, yellows a lot, especially the warmer kinds of yellows, um, and and it's really good. It's an even more uh, neutral and natural green in many senses. Uh, it will depend on your style. Sometimes I actually like the shinier, shinier greens, uh, but this is a good one still. Uh, next up, I think I'm gonna get some pure yellow and try mixing it with um, maybe like a cadmium red. Let's see. Let's get a very vibrant uh, orangey kind of happy color here. 
I forgot to do the dry brush, so I'm gonna <laughs> edit in just a few moments here. Um, so you can see, I'm gonna get all of the rest of the yellow here. And it's, that's uh, a really nice kind of an orange, warm, engine red, uh, which I like a lot. Um, if we mix this with a more of a, I guess, cool red, let's see what this will get us. I'm just a big fan of warm colors. I, <laughs> it's, no matter what I do and how much I try to love uh, other colors, I find that I'm always attracted and and then pulled back to these uh, very warm, uh, warm reds, warm yellows. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty much what you get. I actually love these all of these combinations. Um, I'll bring out a bit more yellow so we can see uh, this mix better and also do some dry brush. So as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, one thing to really have in uh, in consideration uh, when using this kind of a, a color that's student grade. Uh, I think the main criteria to look at is the light fastness um, and even if they say A, it may not be as good as other brands but uh, A is much better than D, you know, when you're uh, using uh, student grade. So uh, at least you'll have the best you can get in that series or in that um, brand. So now I'm going to do some dry brush here, bring out some of the texture of the paper. <laughs> Uh, really rarely, uh, I rarely get to do dry brush with uh, yellows, it's just not as necessary, but hopefully uh, you can see what that looks like. So I think the next step would be to try and glaze uh, on top of this and see what happens. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and we'll test whether we can darken this just by uh, glazing another layer on top of that. Uh, I don't expect too much because it is transparent and you know they usually say that as dark as the paint gets is what you see like this. Uh, when it's thick out of the tube or in the palette or in a pan uh, because that's literally a layer on top of layer on top of layer uh, but we're gonna test it out and I think this is fairly dry now uh, so I don't expect too much but we'll see and also with this kind of a sketchbook that's very uh, simple you know the the Cancun Montval uh, it'll probably pick up some of the previous layers so I don't want to mess around with it too much uh, so I'm just grabbing some very thick paint actually. I'm being unfair because I'm not really glazing, I'm using very thick paint. But uh, in any case it does push it a bit darker. Uh, so I suppose you could glaze uh, a few layers of this and push it to be darker. Now one last thing I wanted to try and I mentioned earlier is lifting. So I think we can try that here from the wet and wet. It's really almost dry but that doesn't really matter. So I have a brush that's uh, just slightly damp, okay. I, I put it in the water and then I dabbed it on a tissue. And I'm gonna try and lift up and see what happens. So you see it's very easily uh, lifted here. Uh, now the question is, is it because it's still wet or is it the quality of the paper? Because it should be staining. So I'm gonna try out with this one. This one's much drier. So I would probably be hesitant to say it's easily liftable and the description does say it's staining. Um, so I really don't know if it's due to the, the paper type, but it does seem to be easily liftable, at least on this kind of sketchbook paper. Uh, but in any case, that concludes it. If you have any uh, other impressions from this paint, let me just zoom out a bit. Um, so if you have a, a different experience with this one, or if you got it, I think it's a pretty common paint to use and is used by many because it's transparent, it's cadmium uh, hue, it's... Um, uh, it's light fast, you know, relative to the Cotman, so uh, I would assume many uh, use this one. So let me know if you have a different experience with this one or if you want to add something uh, to what I mentioned. Uh, I'd be curious to hear your opinion. Uh, let me know what you think. And this is it. We've done everything here, the dry brush, the wet and wet, some of this swatching and the beautiful, beautiful mixes that I really uh, love. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up. So this is it, I really hope you enjoyed this quick review of Cadmium Yellow Hue by Winsor Newton Cotman. Um, again, we didn't get to see many of these uh, and so I hope to review some of the other ones. Uh, ironically, one of the very first episodes of the paint show was with Alizarin Crimson. Uh, maybe it was even the first one, I don't really remember, but with the Cotman's one. Um, the reason I love cheaper materials is really that <laughs> it's 
let's go, you, you are able to let go of some of your fear, not to waste it and not to, you know, stuff like that. Now, this is cheap and also pretty good quality. So uh, I think it's a good combination and I really, uh, I really think it's worth giving a shot. This one in particular has good stats, as you saw, so it's um, transparent if you like that kind of thing. I think it's a good mix of pigments. Uh, so I would check it out if you want to try out the Cockmans. Um, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick review. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you still haven't to receive notifications. I post now four videos a week and I plan on continuing that uh, for a long long time hopefully forever and um, yeah uh, check out my podcast if you enjoy just listening to me talk uh, about different topics such as art and creativity and productivity if you want to learn how to draw and sketch be sure to check out my beginner's drawing course everything is in the description box below let me know in a comment what you thought of this episode and what other paints you want me to to cover. Uh, I do have a few uh, St. Petersburg White Knights that I want to uh, cover soon uh, that I think are going to be really good. And this is it for today. I will see you again in another episode and in another vid real soon.